Yo ho ho, me hearties, me mateys. Grab your best rum and drink up because I'm here to remind you that Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl is one of the greatest movies of all time and don't you dare forget it. Specifically today I wanted to talk about how this movie does something that is really interesting to me where it, basically it ignores one of the like fundamental rules of writing which is show don't tell and people go on and on about this all the time but this movie's like no fuck you tell don't show and it just has like a bunch of scenes that are like purely expositional characters are constantly telling stories about like the lore of this universe and it completely works I don't know how they did it. I guess those the boys over at writing the Pirates of the Caribbean movie dot com are just that good. I'm gonna paraphrase from our boy Mike Flanagan, King of Horror, the Midnight Man himself, who's talked about one of the reasons he loves doing just just all of the monologues. Just every character is always monologuing all the time, is because he loves ghost stories, and ghost stories are essentially just monologues and you best start believing in ghost stories stories. because that's what we're doing that's 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 the line that's from the movie that's in the movie pirates of the caribbean is a is is a perfect blend of horror and action adventure and romance and comedy and somehow those all work perfectly in one movie it's the best movie ever not even just one of i'm claiming it now pirates of the caribbean black pearl curse of the black pearl Best movie ever, all time. Sorry, Citizen Kane. Sorry, uh, Paddington 2. Did you have a, did you have a, did you have a pirate in it? I didn't think so. I don't think so. I haven't seen it. But it's pretty sure there's no pirates. Just a bear going to prison. (laughs) Pirates of Caribbean, they figured out the perfect way to bring us into the world of pirates. And that is through Tall Tales and ghost stories even in the opening scene we're kind of hinted at like pirates are associated with various different legends like yeah, even real history has a lot of that like stuff with blackbeard okay, his whole thing was that he like just kind of presented this like extreme persona and that made people more terrified of him so that people would just surrender to him without him even needing to like fight them half the time and that's kind of the angle that this movie takes is that there are like legends and and different pirate lore and stuff throughout this universe, but we never know how much of it is actually true. And that's, I think, the thing that makes it really interesting. In the opening scene, Elizabeth is singing this pirate song, and then Mr. Gibbs shows up and he's like, hey, you don't sing about pirates, that's bad luck. And then the other guys are like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I'm just telling you, man, there's certain things that that are not good luck. And uh, then pirates show up, so maybe he was right. Maybe she shouldn't have been seen. I don't know. The way the movie like builds tension around the Black Pearl and its legend and the legend of its crew really like just helps to build suspense throughout this movie. We set up Jack Sparrow in the best opening character scene ever. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. And Jack in in himself is such a great character because you also can never really tell how much of what he's doing is planned out. Or if he just has like really high charisma and makes extremely good roles constantly. So he meets these two comic relief guards and they're guarding this one boat. They're like, oh yeah, this is one of the fastest ships ever. And then he's like, I've heard of one ship that's even faster, the Black Pearl. And then they go on for like... (laughs) <laughs> for like 10 minutes about whether or not the Black Pearl is even a real ship. It's a great scene, and it does two things. One, it, it's just a funny, well-written scene, but two, it also starts to build up the legend of the Black Pearl, and it's like, it's crewed by the damned, and it's kept in by a man so evil that hell itself spat him back out. Or it's not a real ship at all. We don't know at this point. But it's intriguing, and at the same time, Jack is using this to distract them. It's so, ah, everything in this movie is so good. This is one of our first uh, major exposition scenes where characters are just kind of describing stuff in the world. There is characterization and some plot stuff going on here, but in like a regular movie, you wouldn't easily be able to get away with a scene like this. But Pirates does it flawlessly. And it also sets up like this major point of tension that makes all these different stories that we hear really interesting is that we don't know how much of it is true. There's a story that the Black Pearl is this evil ship crewed by the damned and kept by a man so evil that hell self sped it back out. 
But is that a real thing or not? We don't know. There might be a ship with black sails sailing around. Elizabeth saw one in the flashback, but that was also maybe a dream or something. So again, we're not entirely sure like how much of what is being told to us is even true at all. Uh, we cut away from Jack for a bit, and then we cut back to him, and he's telling these two guys like another story, and we just cut into the middle of it, and he says, And then they made me their chief. Which I just think is really funny because it sounds like he's describing the plot of the second movie somehow. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. It's just like a small little joke where the the concept of like storytelling is like really important in this universe. And I think it's cool and it adds to the like atmosphere and the and the, the vibe of the movie. Next kind of like piece of information we get about the Black Pearl is when Jack's in jail. And he's hearing from the other prisoners. And then the Black Pearl shows up. And he's like, it's the Black Pearl. And one of the other prisoners is like, I've heard stories that there's said to be no survivors. No survivors? Then where do the stories come from, I wonder? So again, we have this like interesting dichotomy of like how much of these stories is true at all it's almost like jack's trying to lead the audience into hey don't believe everything you hear because some of it is bullshit i wonder if that'll come back in with his character later and that sentiment does seem to end up being true as we learn later on that the black pearl usually doesn't leave any survivors except for all the times that they do will was a survivor of the black pearl attack and jack also survived being uh, mutinied and and uh, left for dead on an island so it both leaves no survivors and sometimes does leave survivors it both things both same story different version but all are true then will's like okay jack let's go i'm breaking you out we're gonna go get the black pearl save my girlfriend jack tells a little bit more about the black pearl he's like have you not heard the story and he talks about how black pearl is captained by captain barbosa which he says with a large amount of disdain and then he mentions that they have like a sort of fortress secret base thing in Isla de los Muertos the island that cannot be found except by those who already know where it is so many so many banger lines in this in this movie which again just adds like weird weird comedic mystery to, to this universe an island that cannot be found except by those who already know where it is so there's some kind of trick to getting to this island that you kind of have to have been there before to, to, to learn. But then like, how did, how did, and how, how did that, how does that work though? Does it just go back generations? Did someone get there by accident? And then they like figured out how, like if you don't, <laughs> it doesn't make, it doesn't really make any sense if you think about it. But again, it adds more mystery to this world. And it makes you constantly question, like, how much of what anyone is saying is true. It's like every bit of exposition comes with a, like, wait a minute, was that bullshit? <laughs> Should I be paying attention to this? Is any of this, is any of what you say true? But somehow that makes it more engaging. You want to lean in and learn more because of how little, how these different pieces of information, how none of them individually add up to anything. <laughs> So Elizabeth gets captured, she's brought on board the Black Pearl, and then this is kind of where we get our first, like, real big exposition scene. Our first true ghost story. Burbosa's crew makes her dinner, and they do basically the scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, where, 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 um, Marion? Is that her name? It's Marion, right? Marion, Marion Ravenwood. Yeah, that's her name. Um, she's having dinner with the bad guy. It's like that exact scene. She has to like put on a dress that he gives her. And then she's like trying to hide the knife. It's that scene from Raiders. I don't know why. It just is. Anyways, Barbosa starts talking about the curse. Oh yeah, we hear a little bit about the curse with um, one, of, one, of the, one of the other pirates on the Black Pearl. One of the things I like about this movie... I like a lot of things about this movie. It's really good. One of the things that's great about it is the, like, I like how all the different crew members of the Black Pearl all have, like, distinct looks. You get a little bit of, like, their personality, or at the very least, they'll have, like, different unique weapons and, and pirate designs. You got the main two guys, of course, with the one guy with the wooden eye and the other guy. It's his boyfriend. You got, like, the big guy who's like, do not speak unless spoken to. And then you got, like, the one guy who's got, like, this big hammer. I, I don't know what that's about, but it's cool looking. And then there's that one guy who meets Jack in the jail cell, and he's, like, he's got, like, a cool vibe. 
he gets to have that line about, you know, nothing of hell. But yeah, he like grabs Jack and he puts his arm out and his arm goes into the moonlight and then it becomes all skeletony. And Jack's like, so there is a curse. So that's kind of our first hint that there is like something supernatural going on here. But at the same time, we still don't know like the extent of it. We don't know if it's like just this one guy or what even is happening to him and why he has a skeleton arm. Anyways, back to the scene with Elizabeth and Barbosa. Just, just, just 10 out of 10, 10, 11 out of 10 monologue from Jeffrey Rush. Just having the blast being, being this pirate, just the most piratey man ever. He's so good. I don't know what I can even say about the scene. It's great. And we find out about the main treasure that they're after, which relates all, it goes back to Cortez, uh, who, you know, did a genocide. So that's pretty dark. They just put that in a Disney movie and, you know, everyone was cool with it. These movies are really dark for, like, what is kind of a family movie also. It's weird. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Some and It works perfectly. It's great. They're just so good. Anyways, Barbosa gives this amazing monologue and he has this awesome just scene. It's so good. And that's when we reveal that, oh, this curse is real. It turns them all into zombie skeletons in the moonlight. And um, you best start believing in ghost stories. Stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Banger line. So good. Ah. Jeffrey Rush is amazing. I don't, I can't even like talk like just watch the scene. Just watch. Just go look up the scene. It's such a good scene. I don't even know what to say. But part of the reason I think the the the, the scene like pays off so well is because there's been these different pieces of him, of misinformation about what's going on, and it's like is any of that just pirate legend? Is it is that just pirate lore? There's also all this stuff about like the pirate code and and pirates seem to be a superstitious and cowardly lot. So is some of this stuff just stuff that they believe in or is any of any of what we hear actually true? The camera died, but we're back. One of the things that I think makes this scene like so impactful is that we have had all these different like kind of pieces of misinformation building up the suspense of like what even the Black Pearl is. Is there a curse? There seems to be some amount of curse going on, but like what the extent of that is, we don't know. So then we get like our full reveal of like, oh shit, magic pirate zombie skeletons we're in trouble. I think part of the reason these like big exposition scenes work in, in the Pirates movies in a way that I feel like this type of scene doesn't really work in other movies is that um, it really helps when you have extremely charismatic actors like Jeffrey Rush and then you can just kind of watch them deliver dialogue all day and you're like, yep, more please. That's a, that's a little... Tr- trick that's a little uh writing writing tip is uh if you have a lot of big monologues just get jeffrey rush to do them and then it's not boring sea turtles sea turtles mate the next exposition scene we get is that jack and company are on their way to ila de los muertos will is asking mr gibbs like what the deal is with jack and he starts telling him the backstory about how jack used to be the captain of the black pearl barbosa betrayed him and took over his ship leaving jack abandoned on an island in the middle of the ocean with nothing but a pistol with only one shot the pistol being a small mercy as you're basically going to starve to death on an island in the middle of nowhere or you could shoot yourself in the head and save uh save yourself some trouble but jack's been saving that pistol and that one shot to get revenge on barbosa once he escapes the island gets a crew takes back the pearl Bit of bada boom bada bing. So far up to this point in the story, everything that Gibbs has said has been true, more or less. But then Will asks the very good question of how did Jack get out of the island? To which we get the answer sea turtles and gibbs tells this story about how jack waited in the shallow water until the sea creatures became accustomed to him and then he roped up a couple of sea turtles and made a raft somehow out of sea turtles will's like what did he use for hair and jack's like human hair for my back which you can pretty much tell right away that that's bullshit then you start to kind of question the whole thing gibbs seems very enthusiastic about the sea turtles part so like i think it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that like he believes that about the story or maybe he just likes telling pirate stories because he does do that a bunch throughout the series and like maybe he kind of knows it's not true but he thinks it's a good story later on in the movie we do find out what happened and how jack got off the island when he is abandoned there once again along with elizabeth and she's like right about pirates and stuff so she's asking him like 
you're the pirate I've read about. Are, are you not? How did you get off this island? And we find out that last time, Jack just completely got lucky and that this island was used for rum running. And so he managed to catch a ride with the like bootleggers when they showed up. And that's it. There was no sea turtles. He didn't do anything like dramatic or exciting. He just spent three days lying on a beach drinking rum, which sounds like a pretty good time to me, but... You know, it's not as impressive as uh, sea turtles. Which this moment kind of calls into question, like, basically everything about Jack's character. Any claim that he's made, any feat that he's supposedly done, might just be complete bullshit. It's kind of the second big reveal in the movie. The first being, oh, there is a real curse. There is supernatural things going on in this universe. The stories are true. There are ghosts. And then at the other end of the spectrum, it's like, everything you've heard about Jack might be complete bullshit and he's just a con man <laughs> and i think that perfect balance is really interesting of like having all these different stories throughout the movie and they might be true or they might be completely false and made up and you don't know for sure on any account something about that uncertainty makes hearing these different stories more interesting the next big exposition scene we get is about will's father will and the rest of the crew that we've been following are now trapped prisoners on the black pearl and he's asking the members of the black pearl about his father because as we've learned a little bit throughout the movie will's dad used to be a pirate and he used to be part of the crew of the Black Pearl, and he was one of the only members who seemed to be kind of sympathetic towards Jack. And we hear this story about Will's dad, Bootstrap Bill Turner, specifically about Bootstrap's Bootstraps. Bootstrap's Bootstraps. bootstraps. Again, the movie plays around a little bit with like the concept of telling stories, where um, the one pirate, I forget their names, Rosencrantz and Guildenstein, that's them. The one guy, he starts telling the story, and then the guy with the wooden eye, like, starts interrupting and starts, like, taking over, and he's like, no, I'm telling the story. It's it's a funny comedic bit, but it's also kind of reinforcing the idea that, like, telling stories and who gets to tell stories in what way is important to this universe. The other interesting thing about this scene is that they talk about how they strapped a can to bootstraps, bootstraps, and then cursed him down to Davy Jones's locker, which ends up being a bit of retroactive foreshadowing when we get to the second movie or something i like to call uncle owening in the first star wars movie uncle owen has like a few different moments about how oh i don't like how much luke is like his dad that's gonna be bad someday and in the first star wars like they didn't know who luke's dad was but they're just kind of like hint vaguely that you know there's trouble there luke's just not a farmer owen. he has too much of his father in him that's what i'm afraid of and then when you get to the reveal of who Luke's dad actually is, then that line like hits harder because you're like, oh shit, he's talking about Darth Vader. Even though I don't think that was in the in the plan at all originally, but it retroactively becomes a more important line. You have a similar moment in the first Shrek movie. Oh, you were expecting Prince Charming. Well, yes, actually. Also the same writers as Pirates of the Caribbean. Hmm. But then, of course, when we get to the second movie and we find out that Davy Jones' locker is a real thing and that Davy Jones is a real guy. And that's where Will's dad is, hanging out with Davy Jones. It fits actually pretty naturally, I think, in this universe where, like, the concept of Davy Jones and Davy Jones' locker is already, like, sort of just in pirate mythology and stuff. And at that point, it's more of, like, an expression or, like a little bit of folklore than anything in the first movie like they just kind of say that as like that's a thing you say when somebody gets like drowned in the ocean that's like a term that means that but like as we've learned from this movie that a lot of the different stories that you hear mm, turns out sometimes there's a little bit more truth in them than you first thought there was there's also this line later in the movie where Elizabeth is trying to explain, like, no, like, the pirates, there's a curse, and they're all skeletons, and they're gonna kill you. And then one of the Commodore's guys is like, sure, sure, I, I know all about that. A mermaid flopped on deck and told us the whole story. Which is also kind of funny, because then eventually the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise would get to mermaids, and mermaids also apparently exist in this universe. So again, every everything that you thought was bullshit turns out to be true, except for Jack's story about the sea turtles. That was bullshit. That's the thing that was, that's the thing that was fake, not the Davy Jones locker, the mermaids, or the skeleton crew. All of that was real, but, but, uh, but sea turtles, 
No such thing. They don't exist. Pirate sequels are much more flawed, but Dead Man's Chest, I think, has one of the best, like, exposition scenes in any of these movies. And that's including all of the stuff with Barbosa in the first movie and the perfect script of that one. But the scene with Tia Dalma, where she explains, like, the lore of the Dead Man's Chest is so good. Naomi Harris plays this ridiculous character who is probably problematic on some level. I don't know. But it's so fun, and I like it anyway. <laughs> and they filmed this one and the third one back to back, so they kind of knew like the lore they were going to set up in this one going into part three. So there's a lot more like overarching foreshadowing in this sequence that's like very intentional. Jack and company, they're looking for this key and what it goes to, and she tells them the story of Davy Jones. Some of the other pirates, like Mr. Gibbs, have heard about Davy Jones, and so they're comparing conflicting stories to Yodama, this weird mystical lady who seems to know things about the magic stuff in this universe is talking about how like he fell in love with this woman and then they're like i thought it was the sea that he fell in love with she responds with this line same story different versions and all are true <laughs> which i think is a brilliant line again it's it's the it's parts of the caribbean nonsensical comedic mystery stuff like the island that cannot be found except by those who already know where it is like later on in the first movie jack's trying to navigate to where they're going and we've already set up that his compass doesn't point north and will's like how are we going to find this place if jack's compass doesn't even work and gibbs is like ah it's a compass that doesn't point north but we are not trying to find north are we which is brilliant and genius later on they explain like that the compass is magic and like what it actually does which works fine but i kind of like the mystery of like it's a compass that doesn't point north which might be useful if you're not trying to go north. <laughs> There's something intriguing about, like, not knowing how much of it is bullshit. Anyways, back to Tia Dalma. She tells us a story about this guy, David Jones, who fell in love with a woman as fierce and unchangeable and untamable as the sea. And the way she talks about, like, he fell in love with a woman and she, like, kind of gestures to herself. Because as we learn in the next movie, she's the woman that he fell in love with. And not only that, but she's also a sea goddess. So when she said like, oh, I thought it was the sea he fell in love with. She's like, yeah, that's true. But it was also a woman. It's the same thing. The same story, different versions. Both are true fucking great writing it's so good there's some other fun moments in this sequence too like she talks about how he cut out his heart and put it into a chest and they're like do you mean literally or figuratively and then they're like no that that can't possibly be a literal thing that you would do right <laughs> and then it turns out that it is a literal thing you can do they also do some a little bit of foreshadowing with will in this sequence tia a little bit flirty with will she seems to like be able to sense that he's got as she says a bit of destiny about him whatever that means but then of course it does pay off later and as will becomes the next like commander of the flying dutchman and he has to replace davy jones's heart with his and it's ultimately it's all a love story it's all a big love story between an octopus man and a, a lady who turned into crabs and uh, Orlando Bloom and uh, Keira Knightley. It's all one big love story. And that's what's so powerful about it. It's about family. There are some other story, ghost story moments in these movies. Those are my favorite ones. It's all the ones in the first movie and the one scene with... with uh, with the with the crab lady i think what's also fun about that scene is that it kind of sets up what the rules are about storytelling in this universe you'll hear different versions of the same story but all have some truth in them like they even uh, call back to the sea turtles moment later on will escapes something and we don't see how and then jack's like how did you get out and will's like sea turtles and jack's like see not not as easy as it sounds, huh? And it's just like a fun little exchange. Anyways, this is just one of the many things that I like about these movies. And maybe I'll do another video another time. Just, cause the first movie especially is just so good. It's just the it's just it's just so it's the best movie ever. It's the best movie ever made. And uh if uh you disagree, I think you better go watch it again cuz you'll be like, "Oh, he was right. He was right all along." This is the best movie of all time. And um, that's it. I like Pirates of the Caribbean. Drink up me hearties, yo-ho.